Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm kind of playing around with like an AI powered workflow. I'm starting in Luminar AI. I'm going to sharpen AI. I'm going to denoise AI. I'm coming back to Luminar AI. It's AI all the way. A-OK. -okay. Let's get going. Um, I've got a photo here. This is a photo from San Francisco where I snuck in a hotel and went out on a uh, like a fire exit kind of thing and got this great view. Anyway, it's it's a great view, but I was kind of doing it sort of, um, you know, secretly because I don't think they wanted me up there, but nobody said anything. Nobody came by. It didn't say you can't go, so I went. Anyway, um, I've got the photo and I was shooting handheld, low light, micro four thirds camera. I don't know if you can see it down here. F1.7, ISO 200. So not really a, uh, a recipe for like the best quality raw file, but it is a raw file. What I'm going to do and my workflow that I typically do is I start here in um, Luminar AI. So what I want to do is make some few basic adjustments. So I'm going to come in here, maybe uh, increase contrast a little bit. The highlights are fine. I'm going to pull up the shadows. I might give it a little bit of tint. So maybe a tiny bit like that. And then I may go into enhance AI and give it a little bit of accent AI for a little bit of overall kind of, you know, pop for lack of a better word. The other thing I'm going to do is pop down here to optics and go into advanced settings and do a little bit of lens distortion correction. So I'm going to do something about like that, I think. So my before and after, here's the before, whoops, there it is. There's the before and there's the current state. Now, if I zoom in, let me show you, I'm going to go to about 200. You can see, I mean, micro four thirds camera, this was like I think it was 2015. So we're talking six years ago, you know, a fair amount of noise, even at ISO 200, lower light, you know, not particularly great, not particularly sharp, but I like the photo. And so what I want to do is make some adjustments to it. And this is where I will start to invoke the AI products from Topaz. So unfortunately, <laughs> there are not plugins in Luminar AI. So I have to do a full export. So I'm going to click export, save to disk. I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to call this SF. Oh, night and uh, pro photo tiff all that looks fine i'm going to save it to my desktop i'm going to go ahead and click save do that export and then i'm going to pop in to the topaz products now a lot of people commonly say you should do denoise before you do anything else to a photo because otherwise if you're doing sharpening and things like that you're sharpening the noise i, I don't know maybe i'm a contrarian i kind of tend to disagree i often do denoising at the very end in this example i'm not but uh, I'm actually gonna sharpen first. And so I'm just kind of, what I typically do in sharpen is, you know, you can do the comparison view and take a look at the different um, options here. And then really all I do, in fact, I'm gonna zoom into 200. And you know, all I do is just take a look around and make some comparisons visually. One of the key things I want to do is make sure that this clock face is pretty sharp. So there it is, motion blur, looks pretty good. It's still updating here for out of focus. That looks pretty good as well. And too soft. I would say too soft does not look as good. I think motion blur looks best. Let me do a side by side. Let that update and there we go. So comparing the left to the right, I definitely think that clock face looks fantastic. These lights, I mean, I started pretty soft there. They're, they're a little bit better, but you know, you can only do so much. Uh, if I ever go back, I'll probably try a tripod and I've got a, uh, larger sensor camera and all that these days. But hey, you know what? If you get a chance to take the shot, you take the shot and you hope that the tools in the future will help you save it. It's kind of what we're doing here. So, uh, okay. So, you know, I've done that. Uh, you know, I can move this remove blur up and down and this is not a tutorial on sharpen. The point here is I kind of tend to do this sharpening before I go to denoise. There is some suppressed noise here. I may experiment with that as well. And I think I'm gonna go kind of in the middle here and maybe a little bit higher. And that is because I'm about to go to denoise next and really apply denoise there, which I think is frankly just fantastic. So I think I'm looking pretty good here. If I scroll around the photo, I also wanna look down here like at this, uh, this bus or whatever you call it. And if you compare that left and right, uh, I mean, it just, so much crisper sharpen AI really does a great job. And so I'm quite pleased with this. I'm going to go ahead and save image and I'm going to keep it in TIFF format. I like how it adds SAI at the end, sharpen AI, so I can know what it is. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Go ahead and hit save. And now we're going to denoise. Okay. And now we're in denoise and I'm starting in comparison view, which I like to do, although I do like to go to 200 just to kind of see how things are looking. 
And for me, again, the clock face is a big deal. I wanted that to be sharp, and I gotta be honest, six years ago, I don't really remember uh, much other than standing up there shooting it, but I, I don't really remember a whole lot about, you know, how good of a job did I do focusing and all the kind of things that you really should be doing. I'm looking around at this, and I would say offhand, clear looks best to me versus low light or standard. I can also try severe noise. So I'm gonna get rid of standard and I'm gonna make that severe noise instead, just to take a look. And I don't know why, there seems to be some kind of artifact showing up there, but um, I still think clear looks best. If you look at that clock face and those numbers, I just think they look better there than they do anywhere else. So once again, I'm gonna to go to this side by side and I just wanna compare. And honestly, I think that looks quite good. Now, here's one thing I notice: if you look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side, there seems to be a little bit of, for lack of a better word, texture added to like the water, right? So if you look at that, it's kind of textured the water a little bit. And you know, I kind of like smooth water, but that's easy to fix in Luminar, and I'll show you how I do that. But overall, I would say like the noise reduction here is looking quite good. I think the sky looks good. Um, and I actually think if you come down here, the noise uh, is, you know, honestly, it just looks great. So these products, I think, work wonderfully. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save image. And I also like, it still has SI, SAI from Sharpen AI Motion, which was motion blur setting, and now Denoise AI. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And now we're gonna go back into Luminar and finish this thing up. Okay, so I've got my finished photo here. Well, finished in terms of uh, Sharpen AI and Denoise AI. And um, it's uh, in the TIFF and uh, format and all that. So now I'm just gonna take it to my external drive here, drop it into that folder. Okay, and after dropping it back in Luminar, one of the great things I like about it is it just reflects the folder structure on your drive. So here's my original RAW file, and here is the edited photo from Base Edits in Luminar plus Sharpen AI plus Denoise AI. You can see the file name here. It still has all that stuff, which I really like. Helps you keep track of what modes you're using. Now I'm gonna go into Edit, and what I wanna do is make some further refinements to the photo. So I may do a little bit here with Accent AI, and I have to be honest, I don't have a real plan here for this particular photo, but I just want to kind of go through and do some of the things that I might, might would normally do just to get the photo looking the way I want it to look. I'm going to come down here to super contrast and I tend to experiment a bit here and then I like to move these balance sliders around. Um, I think that's looking pretty good to be honest. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So let's see, there's before and current state. And the other thing I want to do is maybe come into color harmony. Uh, and get into color balance. I'm gonna start in shadows and go a little bit bluer. See how it's kind of darkening that uh, photo and maybe try the same in midtones, just a smidge. Yeah, very minor. The other thing I wanna do is go get a local adjustment and I want to add a basic local adjustment. This will be a gradient mask and I'm gonna drag that right up on here. Something about like that. And what I wanna do is cool off. I don't like that orangey yellow kind of look. I'm gonna cool that off. I'm gonna maybe increase the exposure a little bit. I think something like that looks a little bit better. Maybe pull down some of the vibrance and saturation just a smidge and just make sure that's a little bit cooler. So let me show you that before and after. There it is before, darker, very yellow, and there it is now, brighter and much less yellow. I just think that looks a little bit better and it, it seems like it should be brighter to, uh, to my eyes. Now I'm going to go up, back up over here in the main editing panel. I'm going to go into color. I'm going to get HSL. I'm going to get the saturation. And I'm going to take saturation, the blue, down a little bit. It's a little bit intense. I don't want to overdo that. And then here's what I was talking about with some of the uh, texture that's kind of added there. I'm going to go into structure AI and do a little negative structure and just paint that in. So I'm just going to... I'm gonna do this really quickly because it's a video. I recommend taking your time and going around some of the things that I'm not really doing a very good job of going around, like that boat and that dock over there on the right. But all I'm doing is smoothing out a little bit of the texture that was in the water, simply because I want that water to be smooth. So maybe something about like that. I can close my masking window and I can increase or decrease the amount of that negative structure. I actually like it kind of low like that. It makes it look a little bit more like a long exposure. 
and that's really my full edit. Let me show you the before and after. So that is the base edits to the raw file before exporting and then going to Sharpen AI and Denoise AI and came back and it looked like that, which I think was a vast improvement. And now I've got it looking even better. So actually let me zoom in at about 200. And I think that noise just looks great. Let me show you the other photo. Let me zip over here, go in at 200 here. And you can see, not very sharp in the clock face here and fairly noisy overall, really grainy in the sky. Whereas if I go over here to the fully edited photo and zoom into 200 on this one, you can see noise is just smooth or gone, I should say. The noise reduction has done a great job. You can see it's much sharper in the clock face, things like that. Now, again, not a perfect setup for shooting the photo, but I feel like the moves I was able to make here really did have a huge impact on getting the photo looking the way I wanted it to look. So that's kind of how I'm using Luminar AI plus Sharpen AI and Denoise AI, kind of a full AI powered workflow example. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends, maybe inspires you to try some of these tools on your own. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video, which is coming soon. Take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you soon and adios.